natural, eco-friendly, cruelty-free, environmentally responsible, organic, non-GMO, sustainable, bird-friendly, carbon-neutral, biodegradable, ethically produced, fair trade, and of course, green. If you've spent any of your time shopping in the last 10 years, you've probably noticed labels like these plastered on a growing number of consumer products. The Fair Trade certification alone appears on roughly 7,000 products in Canada, and these products exist in response to growing consumer demand for more ethical or conscientious options in the marketplace. If you're 18 to 35 years old, it's likely you've made purchase decisions based on these marketing terms, with over two-thirds of millennials reporting that they participate in ethics-based consumer behavior, and up to a third reporting that they have gone so far as to boycott individual products or brands for ethical reasons. This popular set of consumer attitudes and behaviors, often referred to as ethical consumerism or ethical consumption, is typically motivated by a desire to mitigate or lessen one's negative impact on the world. Based around the concept of a dollar vote, consumers attempt to change the destructive, unsustainable, and unethical practices of businesses by diverting their purchase choices to companies and products they see as more ethical, more green, or sustainable. The allure of these practices is obvious. All of the fun of being a consumer in the 21st century with none of the guilt. But do these practices really have an impact, or do they amount to little more than the Catholic indulgences of the 12th and 16th centuries? Does purchasing ethical products simply assuage any sense of social responsibility in those privileged enough to afford them? Can we really change the world just by changing our brand of coffee? The truth is, when we look to the data, there is little convincing evidence supporting the belief that creating a demand for products marketed as greener or more ethical has significant impact. Over half of Canadians describe themselves as ethical consumers, yet Canada leads the world in household garbage production, with the average person throwing out more than 10 times their body weight in trash per year. And the Great Lakes continue to be destroyed by the unsustainable practices of industrial agriculture fueled by consumer demand. Is this just an issue of not enough people actively participating in green consumerism? It doesn't seem likely. While it's obvious that some green consumer behaviors, such as choosing not to drive a car at all, or abstaining from buying meat, have at least some measurable impact when looked at in isolation, these actions may amount to little more than a penance in the scope of a person's total consumption and be intangible on a global scale. In 2012, a study didn't find any significant difference between the ecological or carbon footprints of green consumers versus those who make no effort to consume green products. It also found that those who make efforts to do green things tended to offset these behaviors by consuming more overall. Choosing to buy green products has also been shown to have negative relationships with altruistic behavior. That is, people really do use these products as a moral offset and may feel less social responsibility after choosing products that they think are better for the earth. And really, when it comes down to it, the ecological and social impacts of individual consumer choices are vastly overshadowed by that of the industrial sector and other forces out of the hands of the average person. Those most directly responsible for environmental and social destruction, such as multinational resource extraction companies and double-dealing governments who sell them the rights to operate, they tend to fight tooth and nail with lobbying, propaganda, and even violence to squash any efforts that would really affect their bottom lines. It would seem the concept of the dollar vote is irrelevant when we don't all have equal sway. Those with the most votes, the most power and wealth, are the least likely to demand change from a system that serves them. The 200 years since the Industrial Revolution have shown that we can't count on the corporate elite or the corrupt bureaucratically entrenched governments to bring about timely environmental, social, or economic justice. All of us, the people, when organized and inspired, may hold the power to bring about true worldwide sustainability, whatever that would look like. But the moral distraction of green products and ethical consumption only serves to pacify our desire for change. <laughs>